this is my quote that I have for you. I already have this written out. Give me, uh, give me less than 24 hours. I will send you out an email and we'll be good to go. And you just let me know whenever you're ready to sign it. They like, okay, 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 <laughs> yeah. Let, let's get this started. Made it to the top, ain't none of y'all stopping me. Used to say I never get a ring, Charles Barkley. Now I got a wife, got kids on property. Bubble eye beans that look like that be watching me. Okay, I lied about the beans, but that was hard though. I'm still in that black act, but she starred though. Cause that's all it takes. Oh, I'm flashing for. Oh, I'm on my grind, not no more fashion show. What's up, y'all? AJ Simmons here, founder of the Clean Biz Network, and today's guest has actually been a CBN member since, what is that, January 2021, but I really <laughs> didn't know because she didn't post much. So I met her last year at the uh, CBN conference, and she came, and I saw that, and I actually thought that she just, you know, just randomly decided to buy. I had no idea she was actually in CBN, but anyway, uh, let's see what we got here. All right. So I was looking for, I was looking to actually at some promo material to promote this year's conference. And I kept seeing her on there. And I was like, you know what? Let me check on her and reach out and see how she's doing. Her social media said that she was doing okay. So I offered to uh, have her come on for an interview. So without further ado, please welcome the owner of Say Clean Cleaning Services, Mrs. Mercedes Bell. What's up, Mercedes? <laughs> <laughs> How you What's doing? Going? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I cannot complain. Not complain at all. So, you know, we always started off with this infamous question. If you don't mind sharing with us about where you are as far as uh, revenue goes with your cleaning company. So I am currently at about we're peaking over 150. Um, we've been doing um, now that's 150 like in total. Uh, I've been doing this for a while now and it's just like. When you think about it, you're like, dang, that's all I made. But then <laughs> with like the work and stuff like that, I'm like, it's go time. It's go time. It's go time. That's what's up, though. 150000 So let's before we get into how you got there, let's go ahead and rewind and just tell us a little bit about who you are, where you're from, and all of that good stuff. So my name is Mercedes. I'm from Kansas City, Missouri. Um, I randomly got into cleaning, like, completely random. Uh, I had a professional clothing line uh, that was an online boutique for a little bit. And then I randomly was just like, clothes are expensive. <laughs> like if, if I want a business, I need something that is like a low startup cost and it can get me the return that I'm looking for immediately. So it was just like a, it was a turning point for me. Um, randomly, one of my friends had asked like, do you know a cleaning lady? And I'm just like, yeah, me. Like, just, <laughs> I'm like, sure, I can do it, whatever. And went and did the job. That was like my first $60. And I took pictures. And I didn't know that just me taking pictures would put me where I am today. So um, I ended up taking those pictures, posting them on Instagram. I did a few of uh, my other friends' homes and I just recorded what I was doing, recorded how I did it. And it ended up, but that was like July of 2009. Yeah, July of 2019. That was just like the little rant. That was the random spurt of just like right. just trying stuff. Right. And then uh, in December 2019, I was just like, Let, let's just see what, what comes out of this. And then a pandemic happened. And I was just like, oh, like now I start a business and they're trying to. Um, <laughs> They trying to take me away from <laughs> what I'm trying to do. Like, hold on. Yeah, like, about you, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, okay, God. Like, I was trying to do something good for the world, but okay. Right. So I end up getting on YouTube and I'm just like, what to do with a cleaning business now? Because now I have to pivot because of COVID. The first video I see is AJ Simmons saying, it's go time. It's go time. <laughs> I'm like, you know what? You know what? The phones start ringing and it has not stopped. Most of those clients that I've had on the pandemic, at the beginning of pandemic, I still have them because that was the relationship of, I need to keep you safe. Now I do have a residential cleaning company, but the whole thing was, I'm here to keep you safe. And most people were like nurses and all walks of life. So it was just like, 
we got something here. <laughs> Sure. Now, my next question was going to be out of all of the businesses, why I started cleaning business, but you kind of just answered that. So I guess my real question, I guess I'll twist it a little bit and just say, so would you say that then the cleaning business would be just a good business for anybody that's looking to become an entrepreneur and don't have a whole lot to invest? Would that be, could I kind of sum that up and say that for you or, or am I putting words in your mouth? No, you definitely can say that because when I started listening to other entrepreneurs and seeing what they're doing, crazy enough, most of them have started with a cleaning service. Yes. And so like I, I'm I'm in there cleaning with my headphones on and they're like, oh, well, I had a cleaning service. I'm like, what? They millionaires now. So I'm like, you OK, so obviously somewhere in the cleaning industry or just being in the cleaning service in general, it has a certain type of foundation that you can scale any business now. Like now um, I actually do marketing for a restaurant. And now that I see like the things that you can do and the things that you can implement, I learned that all from the cleaning industry. Like I, I started my business on social media. So it's like you literally can all the hard and soft skills that you learn from cleaning industry can go anywhere. So I would recommend anybody to do it, but you have to have the tenacity to actually be a manager. Facts. I love that. Now, how did you come up with the name Say Clean Cleaning Services? <laughs> so uh, my name is Mercedes and my okay. mom calls me Say. Oh. Um, <laughs> so oh. it was Say Clean. Well, at first I looked it up and it's just like, there's a cleaning service in Florida that has this name. And I was like, hey, like, you know what? Let's just tack on cleaning services. And then we're two separate entities. They actually, they're in Florida. They're doing well. But this is Say Clean Cleaning Services. <laughs> That's how I came up with the name. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, now I saw in my notes here that you didn't get the full starter kit. You got when I had, I used to sell a starter course, which by the way, for those watching now, I don't sell a starter course anymore. You get it automatically when you sign up and clean business network. All right. So, but you got it when I was selling it. And since it didn't come with supplies, I'm curious to know what supplies did you start off with? So I actually, at the time, I did not have a car and I dang sure did not have any cleaning products. So I went to Dollar Tree and I found like pretty much the basics of the basics. Don dish soap. Um, I had my own broom, just whatever they had, gloves and all of that. I just picked up what they had left. But then once the pandemic happened, I was just like, where am I going to get supplies from? And then I ended up going to like Home Depot and Lowe's and things like that, getting the larger quality quantities and just, you know, just trying to save as much as I could, but also cleaning very efficiently. <laughs> but at the same time, it was just like, we got to let make this stretch until we see what's really going on with the pandemic. For sure. So what you saying that then, how much would you say like, you paid just initially to get it going. Cause I mean, you said you had your own broom, like you literally bootstrapped it, bootstrapped it. So like how much would you say would you pay in total to get started? No, I was at Dollar Tree. So there were <laughs> like $20. Like it was right. 20. the only thing, let's just, let's say $40. Let's say it took me $40 to start a cleaning company. It's a post of pictures on Instagram. Um, wow. I went and I brought a, like a utility bag from Home Depot and then that was $20 and then the rest was supplies. And I had like a little Publix bag that I put my towels in and we were good to go. Oh man, we bought, you know, that's about to be the title of the video, right? <laughs> $40 into $150,000, right? Exactly. <laughs> and it's facts though. All right. So it just ain't happened overnight though. She put that work in. All right. But anyway, uh, let's see what we got here. Now it looks like according to your website, because I was doing my homework, look like you got, you do residential and some move in, move out. But for the most part, you lock in on residential. So two questions on that. The first one is what made you choose that route? And then the next one is, did I even help you? Because you're like, I know I'm more commercial. So it's like, did I even help you? So, but, uh, but what made you choose that residential route though first? So what happened with residential was that was something that I was already familiar with that I knew that I personally could build the rapport for someone to let me inside of their home. So that was already my, like my little secret society that I, I was just like, some, I'm, I feel like I'm welcoming enough to let me in your home. However, I was really nervous to go to a business and say, hey, do you guys have a cleaning company? So I'm, I'm like, where should I go? And when I found your course, 
I'm like, well, let me use some of these tips and we're gonna, the tips that he's, he's given us and I'm going to put it into residential cleaning. Right. Now, when I built up the confidence in residential cleaning and um, now companies are calling my phone about commercial cleaning, I ended up using the scope of work. I used those contracts. Like I, I went into the commercial realm. However, at that time, um, it was different because how do I say this? People who like to work at night are a different type of people. Mm. And when I realized they just have a different personality. And when I realized I was like, I'm bubbly. I'm like, Hey, good morning y'all. And when I'm talking to people who want to work at night, they like, Hey, how you doing? Yeah. I, I'm just ready to work. And I'm just like, uh, okay. So that, that was something that I struggled with in the beginning, but I ended up um, doing commercial cleanings for um, a few gyms. I did spas, body, like the body contouring places. Um, I've done a couple of hair shops. Um, just pretty much just like whoever called me, I, I just said, yeah. But I also went through, um, I took marketing skills and I went through Instagram and I followed everybody who had a local business. And then I was just like, hey, if you're looking for a cleaning company, um, here's my information, blah, blah, blah. And people started calling me back. And this is like, a little, this was like, what, like 2021. So pandemic is still hot, but it's not like, it was a, towards the end where people are like, okay, it's getting back to normal. And it actually worked out in my benefit. So that's what's up. That's what's up. Now <laughs> about like clean business network, AJ Simmons. So if somebody did want to start a residential cleaning company, would it still be beneficial for them to be in clean business network or it not? It ain't going to really help them at all. Absolutely. I would definitely say that the tools that you do implement in, uh, well, the course at the time, those tools, I needed that little bit of confidence to know that um, somebody else is out here doing something similar. And I felt like that was close enough, like the re relatability that you posted in your videos, like, y'all, this really is easy. You just need to get to it. Like the mentality that you showed us gave us like a certain level of confidence to just like, okay, cool, I can do it. Um, like you, you mentioned about employees, you mentioned about contracts, like you actually wrote it out to make us look extremely professional. Like when any, any of those, um, what is it called? Commercial cleanings that I went to, they didn't even know that this was my first time talking to them about this. Like they had no idea. I'm just like, hey, well, this is my quote that I have for you. I already have this written out. Give me, uh, give me less than 24 hours. I will send you out an email and we'll be good to go. And you just let me know whenever you're ready to sign it. They're like, okay, 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 yeah, let, let's get this started. So I would definitely say as far as you giving us the tools to literally dominate in a field that people are literally just walking up to companies and saying like, let me just give this a try. You actually gave us a blueprint of how to speak to employees, how to talk to, if you wanted to do subcontracting, how, how would you like to do that? Uh, what your scope of work is supposed to look like? What your contract is supposed to look like? Uh, the calculated clean, what? You are a genius. <laughs> So you are a genius for that. And I'm like, I'm not even being funny about that. I went, when I went walking to that gym and I seen how big it was, I said, Lord have mercy. But when I started like breaking down, I'm like, you got to pay me. You, yeah. you got to pay me. You got to pay me. Once I, once I did that and I, I wouldn't have been able to do that without you. So thank you. Thank Absolutely. you, AJ Simmons and Clean Biz Network. Like, I appreciate <laughs> thank you. that. Thank you, Mercedes. Okay, okay now. now. How much time would you say you're spending right now actually cleaning in the field? And like, basically, what's your typical work day slash week looking like right now? So right now, um, I market for a restaurant. So that is my full time job. As far as me, like actively cleaning in my business, um, unless somebody's sick or they really, really, really can't make it. That is literally the only time that I pop in and out of what I need to do. There are a few cleanings of like people that I've known for a while. And I'm just like, let me just go yeah. and do the cleaning or something like that. Obviously depending on the time frame, but it's like um probably a day. 
I will say about three, four hours. So that's like two hours in the morning. So before I go to work and then like in the middle of the day, I'll check up on people like, hey, everything good. Um, if I if anybody has any questions or if I need to speak to a client or something like that, like it is very minimal contact, um, which I enjoy. Uh, okay. Sometimes, sometimes I miss the cleaning aspect. So cleaning used to be fun. Like you in there with your headphones on, you in the zone. But like now, now I'm at the serious end. The administrative work is actually like you got to get on it. Like yeah. everything needs to be quick, fast, in a hurry. Otherwise, you will miss an opportunity. That's what's up. So now you, you, you said something interesting here. So I'm gonna deviate from those questions I sent you, and I'm gonna ask you something else. So, all right. So you started off cleaning yourself. Yes. Now you at the point you basically got it pretty much automated for the most part. Like they doing it every now and then you check in, but for the most part it's running itself. So here's what I want to know, because I'm sure you've seen these little ads too, with all of these different people popping up uh, saying that you can run these remote cleaning companies. They all teach in residential cleaning. I ain't seen nobody do one for commercial yet other than, you know, my automation program, but I ain't selling what they sell. <laughs> they make it yeah, seem yeah. like you just go in there, plug and play. So what, here's what I want your opinion on this. Do you think that somebody can just come in fresh out, like fresh into business and just straight up do it the way you're doing it now without actually having that cleaning experience first? Or do you think they should start out clean first like you did? What would you be your advice on that? I would say in order for you to have a cleaning company, you at least need to do like five cleanings. And I mean like every type of cleaning, just because after working as a cleaner and then moving over to like, the virtual assistant and then climbing up my own corporate ladder of actually being a manager and then now I'm in the owner's place um you need to know what's happening in these homes like I I personally or I think I think you need to clean you you need to get you need to get dirty because otherwise you're gonna be like why did it take y'all six hours to do x y and z and really they in there like <laughs> going hard like scrubbing like arms hurting legs weak because they've been standing up sitting down standing up to, like I, I I definitely think that you you need to get out in the field in order to do an industry like this um especially because with the checklist and things like that like you need to know what goes into what you need to know how to do a deep clean this is residential you need to know how to do a deep clean you need to know the best products to use on your oven you need to know how to uh probably move somebody's couch or yeah. Just whatever you need to do, you need to have that experience. Yeah, I agree. All right. Now, what was your best way for finding customers in the beginning? And is that the same method that you're using now? In the beginning, uh, I would just post like before and after pictures. <clears throat> and to me, it was boring. It made my page extremely boring. Um, <laughs> and I started watching uh other people market other companies mm -hmm. and so I watched this lady uh, I don't know if you ever heard of the hair doctor I watched her like literally teach you what she's doing and that's how she was gaining her customers mm -hmm. and so I went from um posting on Instagram before and after pictures to I'm going to show you how to clean your oven to come like most people are not going to clean their oven. Like let's, 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 let's be real about this. People are really not cleaning up their homes until they actually call somebody. Like they may put some stuff under the cabinet, put right. some stuff like in random places just to get it out of the way. But um, just basically it's like, The transition from actual marketing on social media to moving into doing paid ads was a very big jump for me because that's when I was like, oh, like this is a very lower, lower overhead um, business. Mm -hmm. But then when I realized like how much money you really should be putting into ads, that's when I was like, oh, like this is where the money go. <laughs> Like, like the getting the cleaners and paying them out, all of that other stuff. Like that's cool, but like the real profit goes into uh, goes into paid ads. So I currently do Yelp ads, and then I have not stepped into the Google realm just yet. I'm learning some new things, and I feel like it's time to go. Like people actually sleep on Yelp, and they sleep on Yelp because it's just like it's not Google. Like you want to Google everything, but when you read some of these Yelp reviews, you'll realize how many people actually are on Yelp. 
Yeah. And you know, I think that's genius because, you know, my initial brain would tell me like, okay, I want to teach people how to clean because if I teach them how to do it, then they just going to do it themselves. Why would they hire me? But if you really think further, like you said, ain't nobody really going to do it. No way. And so by you doing it, you're showing them now that you're qualified to do it, which gives them more incentive to call you when they're ready for it to get done. So Absolutely. genius, genius marketing attack today. I love that. I'm going to have to ask you for some advice on what I should be doing with my <laughs> content later. But anyway, um, how do you go about? Well, actually, yeah, I guess I can ask it like that. How do you go about pricing your ser- your services? So in the beginning, um, I would like to say I'm not proud of how I priced my services. Okay. I was, I was out there cleaning houses for like $60. Like, <laughs> I, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. Right. Um, and then I just kept hearing the thing that got on my nerves was people kept saying, why are you pricing so low? Why you? At that, at that moment, that was like a little ego shot. I'm like, why are you all in my pockets? But in reality, it's like, why are my prices so low? Yeah. Like, it's taken me four to five hours to do this job. Why are my prices $100 to clean a three-bedroom house? Why? And then I started doing market research. I didn't realize in my head, I was like, I don't want to look at somebody else's business and um take things from them because in my head I thought this this is supposed to be an original business like this supposed to be all for me and I wanted to do it this way no you have to look at your competitors I looked at my competitors prices and I'm just like huh this is interesting so I did um, market research. I found like, you know, like the Molly maids uh, and then the local cleaning business owners and then the cleaning business owners who were like marketing on Instagram. I looked at everybody. I did about like 15 people and lined it up. And I was just like, oh, OK, it's go time because now now we're on the lower end. I don't want to gouge, but we're going to sit right in the middle, but like right there to high end. So um, I ended up doing my market research. And then just over time, I'm like, some of these things are taking me longer than others. So then I started tagging on certain fees, like, hey, like, if it's over four hours, and that's what we're guaranteeing you, we have to stop or you have to pay. Yeah. So that that was something that um, those were the adjustments that I had to make was market research and how much time is it really taking to get these things done. For sure. I love, and, and also trying to point out something because you said that, that f- like, for example, that four hour thing. And if you go over, you stop and ask them if they want to go on. Another thing I love that you did, I saw this on your website, was um, you got this checklist that's already there. So they ain't got to wonder what the service includes. Like, because a lot of people ask me, AJ, what's the difference between a deep clean and a regular clean? I would tell them, especially for residential, go to same clean, <laughs> same clean services <laughs> website. And that, that'll that tell you right there. And I think that was genius that you did that. So I just wanted to shout that out to you too to let you know that that was a, a brilliant idea. All right. Now, what are you doing? What do you think you're doing differently than other people who either started at the same time as you or started after you? And maybe they either A, not making as much as you're making for your cleaning company or B, they just straight up went out of business. Like, what do you think separated you from that pack? Taking a break. Mm. I had to, I literally went on like a, like, like I was doing it like two months at a time. So about the whole time that I've been doing cleanings, I was taking small breaks. Um, I don't think people realize about the whole like quit your job and be an entrepreneur. When you are working to survive, it gives you a certain type of hustle, but it just that hustle doesn't necessarily make you a business owner. It just makes you a hustler. And something that I realized is that when I was just so gun ho on like business, 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 business. That's all I talked about. That was all I was around. That's, that's all I wanted to hear in my ears. I didn't want to listen to music, all that other stuff. It sounds grand, but it was driving me crazy. And I needed, I needed a break. Like uh, it sounds like when you start a business that like you're just supposed to be on go mode all the time. And I realized that was not the balance that I wanted for my life. And so me taking small breaks at a time is is actually really refreshing. And whenever I get back on Instagram or whenever I um, whenever I get back to posting or being more social and running more ads and doing stuff like that, it always goes. It, it's never a negative um, return. 
So yeah. me taking breaks, um, me also just spending that own my own personal time, um, as well as I would say switching my mindset from being a consumer. Like since I buy things myself, I had to realize like what it, what what's making me buy stuff. What 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 made me buy the Cheerios the like the other day is because the way that they like they changed the color on the Cheerios. I don't know if you noticed that, but like now Cheerios don't look the way Cheerios looked like five years ago and they keep making small transitions, but it's like, it's bringing you in. So I would definitely say taking a break, taking like a little step back. um, And also like freeing yourself from me being a business owner is a personality trait. Mm -hmm. Like that's just something that I do. Like, Okay, it's longer hours than a nine to five, but like this is just something that I do. This is not who I am. Yeah, and I noticed too in my notes uh, before the interview that you like to uh, listen to podcasts and attend events, and so I'm wondering. I got some other thoughts, but I think I'm gonna hold those. But I'm wondering what made you get into that, and I'm gonna see if I can say what I wanted to say. I'm gonna see if I can get it out without sounding wrong. Um. Only, I, I say that because it's rare, right, for people to be into that. So it's like, well, that's something that somebody introduced you to. Do you think you just kind of sort that out on your own just by you being an entrepreneur minded person? Like what made you get into podcasts and attending these business events? Since I was a kid, I always felt like I need to be somewhere with a suit on. <laughs> I need to be right. like just in the mix with other like prominent people like I, I've always felt like that and so when I started to listen to podcasts and I started like just searching things YouTube really was like YouTube showed me that there are so many people out here trying to do the same thing and that's not even necessarily like cleaning business mindset or anything like that but it's just like a lot of people are trying to get their mentality together a lot of people trying to get their confidence up a lot of people are trying to um build themselves to be who they've always dreamed of when I started listening to podcasts and stuff it was just basically off of self-development um the a job that I had had I was working uh at a preschool and the lady brought in uh, David Shans I don't know if you know who that is but she she brought him in and he's like this is what you want to do all your life <laughs> like, and I'm like uh I don't know like I'm 20 I'm freaking what 22 at the time but she introduced us to self-development when she introduced us to self-development I'm like there's certain things that I'm lacking that will help me get into the doors that I want to get into and it's like full-blown self-development so she introduced us to uh Sleepers for Sucker David Shands and then moving on and on and on I kept listening to Eric Thomas and then I was just like okay a little less motivation I need skills now and so then I started looking for certain skills that I was interested in learning and then it just I I still haven't stopped I go on cleanses where I don't listen to music I don't um, unless it's like in a social setting and I just go full blown with the podcast and I mean learning everything I have construction Oh my, uh, I'm not even interested in construction. (laughs) I have construction podcasts. I have um, like maintenance men podcasts, like full blown because we're all doing something common, but at the same time, it's the stuff that they're, they're going to teach. It, it just really helps. So I just listen to a lot of entrepreneur, entrepreneurial um, podcasts and things like that. So even me just getting into it, I just enjoyed it. Yeah. Yes. That's what I'm the same way. I got like <laughs> multiple different playlists of different types of like, this might be my software as a service section. This might be my cleaning business section. This, you know what I mean? A bunch of different things. So definitely can relate to that. And also what you said earlier about taking breaks, like that was something I had to learn over time too, which was, all right, everything ain't got to be business, business, business. Don't forget, like we definitely want to enjoy this too, right? Reap the, little, the rewards from all the sacrifice that we're doing. So uh, definitely agree with everything you're saying so far. Now, I see that you have some experience with W-2 employees as well as 299 contractors. So at this point, which ones do you prefer and why? I prefer contractors. <clears throat> now, sometimes I teeter back and forth. 
of how I feel about it um, because now I do contract out all of my work. Um, I do target small businesses and I say, hey, I'm here to help you fill in your gaps of your schedule. I know you have girls. I know you have things to pay for. Like that's how I'm coming at it is because there's a lot of cleaning business owners who don't have clientele and they're trying to pick it up. However, it is still my clientele. And at the same time, I do, in some cases, I do take a little bit less of percentage, but that's how these houses are getting cleaned. <laughs> and that's how my business is growing. They, they may not stay with me for six, seven years, like, but that's also not the point. A, a W-9 employee, or I said W-9, a W-2 employee won't even stay that long. So it's right. just like, um, I went the employee route and when i realized like there's a lot of expenses behind employees so workers comp um a larger insurance bill um what's the other one payroll taxes yes the payroll taxes and then also um what is it called just basically insurance was the one that really got me (laughs) (laughs) or she started talking about uh Oh, well, every time you add an employee, it's like a couple of this and this and that. I said, okay, let me find <laughs> let me find another way because this is my primary income. Right. So, so let me let me find something else. And then when I found contractors, it, it was go time. These people already know how to clean. Uh, they already have experience. I'm literally talking to you like an adult. Not saying I was talking to them any different, but it was <laughs> like we understand each other already. This isn't somebody just trying to find something new on the side. Uh, and even if they're, even if you come to me and you say, hey, I want to learn how to clean or hey, I want to clean. I say, these are my requirements. I need you to have a car, your own supplies and insurance. That's all I need you to have. Yeah. And if you want to go out and get you an LLC, that's fine. But when I send this 1099 for you, that is for you to take care of when taxes are due like that, that that's all I need you to understand I actually worked as a contractor when I was doing substitute teaching and they really showed me the layout of right. contracting so when I got into it and I started doing it to other people the verbiage that they were using it wasn't like let's be partners no we work together but these are my clients and this is how this is how we roll this out. You have to pay taxes on this. You have to take care of yourself. You have to make sure that you can get from A to B and make sure you put your car on your insurance and turn your like I'm in my mind. I'm teaching you how to be a business owner. That's it. Or I'm teaching you how to be a more structured business owner. That That's how that's how I had to convince myself. But then I was just like, nah, this really was going on. Yeah. So, no, that's it. That's the blueprint right there. Everybody be like, AJ, how you get how you how do you subcontract other companies? My face just told you that that is literally it. That's the whole cleaning business automation program within itself. Like other than you know what I mean, like the little added elements I got, but that's the overview of it right there. Like that's that's perfect. All right. Now, one last question before we jump into this lightning round. I want to ask you, what has been the hardest part of I guess being in business and growing your business so far? Um Learning that the profit is not my money. <laughs> that I'm was still struggling with that to this day. You <laughs> said what? <laughs> I'm still struggling with that to this day. <laughs> that that was something that made me go back to work. <laughs> like it's because I'm seeing the numbers flow in, and I'm seeing this, and I'm just like, the money has to go somewhere else besides my pockets. And then that's when I learned about you know like doing ads and things like that, and and getting into SEO and getting a proper website and investing in certain things inside of my my systems. Um, When I realized I needed a virtual assistant, I was just like, why don't you have money to get a virtual assistant? And then I'm just like, oh, it's because I'm still taking a larger percentage. And although they're not like the primary like income position, you need to realize that you need them because I can't I can't answer every phone call. I can't because I'm talking to cleaners and I'm talking to clients and I'm posting on social media and I'm doing this and I'm doing it like it, it's just a lot like um, it, it, you got to really back in. <laughs> That's huge. And I'm glad you brought that part back up too about the job because I definitely wanted to touch on that because I had to do that too. Right. So 
I systemized my company, but once I did that, like when I hired everybody for all my contracts and then I wasn't cleaning, but I also wasn't making no money no more either because you know, that take out the money that I was paying myself, right? So I took this job with Jam Pro working for them as an operations manager, which I'm grateful for. If I hadn't do that, I wouldn't even know how to do Clean Business Network. But anyway, um, by having that job, it allowed me to not have to depend on the company money and I can actually grow the company at that point. It sounds like that's what you did too. And I always tell people that, um, you know, you look at Jay-Z, where after they did uh, Rockefeller, he went and got a job as the president for Def Jam. And to me, right. that seemed like he got solidified really like, you know, cause in the beginning, you just kind of hustling. You ain't really, and he was splitting it three ways with the other two guys. So it's just like, he probably won't even getting it yet. But once he got that job, was able to get that experience from another company, that's when you really get your stability. So for those who watch, and I, def I definitely recommend that you be stuck out there in that field or you can't seem to get out of it or you don't know how to systemize or you're scared you're going to lose too much money to pay your own bills. Don't be scared to get a job. It's okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's okay. And systemize your business on the side. Just make sure you get a job that's flexible enough where you can still run the company and just right. do it. Do what you got to do. 100%. All right. I talked y'all head off enough. My bad. It's supposed to be about my savings, but she said some good points. I can help her uh, piggyback. But anyway, <laughs> Uh, lightning round. So the way it works is you say, I'm going to say a word or a phrase and you just tell me the first thing to come to your mind. So you ready? Okay. All right. Here we go. First word is Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, my mama <laughs> and my daddy. <laughs> I'm okay. saying that because I miss them. <laughs> uh, Atlanta. Um, business. Fact. Real quick on Atlanta, because you said David Shans. And you said you was 22. Was did he already have the podcast and stuff back then? No, he didn't. This is when he was um going to schools and going doing the professional work of like talking to teachers and um doing the curriculums inside of school. So when he came to us, he was just like, um, she wanted me to come here and talk to y'all, but I really don't know what I want to talk to y'all about because where where are y'all? And when yeah. he like took he did like a overall self-development thing and then when he took us into those smaller rooms like he really drilled into us like you need to know what you want to do you need to know how you're going to do it and you need to figure out a plan yeah. and just that has stuck with me and that was like 2016 so this was like this was a minute ago um so yeah that, and that was back in Kansas City <laughs> oh, I, I wow. here in 2019. That was back in Kansas City. Oh, she, wow. See, my boss said it again. I, said, I thought that was Atlanta. No, no, no. My boss had, um, she was in his mentorship and then she brought him in and introduced him to us. And I, I'm actually still a part of um, the morning meetup and stuff like that because of that interaction. Like, she really, she sold into us. And I feel like being an owner or just being an entrepreneurship and stuff, like you really have to sow into other people so that you can learn. She's still in there. She's been running her business for like 15 plus years now. Wow. So, That's yeah. what's up. Okay, because what I was going, I was thinking, dang, maybe I need to move to Atlanta. Everybody always seemed like y'all just network like <laughs> nothing now over there. But anyway, it's you crowded up here. No, right. <laughs> he said, take Don't your time. Do take your time. <laughs> you know, stole my phrase. Take your time. All right. <laughs> college. Your opinion on college? Um, I'll say I have my days where I regret it. <laughs> I regret okay. not not finishing. But then okay. there's other days that I'm just like, what I be doing, what I'm doing now. Um I feel like I would always have a business. I just don't know if I would have went to college, would it have been a different business? Um, I mean, I went to college for like a year and a half. And then I was just like, Ugh, okay, whatever. Trying to work and go to college is like the a very big headache. Okay. So. Uh, entrepreneurship. Um, corporate ladder. Like, I, okay, listen. I had to learn this in my own business that you have, to, if you're going to be an entrepreneur, you have to build your own corporate ladder. Like, like I said that I went from cleaner to my own assistant to my marketing director <laughs> to my, uh, to being a manager, to being uh, the operations manager. And then now I feel like I'm finally a boss. Like 
and, and it took me a minute to get there. Everybody else on the outside was like, go Mercedes, you're an owner, you're a boss. And I, I didn't feel like it. It's because I'm still doing those little bitty intricate things. So now that's an excellent answer. And I'm a, man, it hurt my feelings when after a while you, after you make a certain amount of revenue as a single member LLC, eventually it's going to make sense for you to switch over to an escort, right? And guess what you are when you own the escort? You're an employee now because you have to be on salary. Exactly. And so, you know what I mean? So when you said it, it's like, damn, I did all of that just to go get a job. But it, I mean, is that my company, but it's still a job. So you're right. Corporate ladder, it is. All right. Um, the cleaning business. Oh, messy. <laughs> <laughs> very, very messy. It's okay. a messy place to be. When you, when you um, do not have proper structure, it is a very messy place to be because you will end up doing more cleaning than actually doing administrative work. Yes. Because you're trying to you you trying to do everything. <laughs> you are trying to do everything. I, I will always say that you I think that you should get proper professional um professional experience and then move into a business. I, I will I will always say that to everybody. Yeah. And unfortunately that's unpopular because we all want it now. But truth yeah. of the matter is you can't skip <clears throat> the process, honestly. Uh key to success. Um patience. Okay. Like being being extremely patient to being to being successful. Um, just like with like a regular regular person, you still gotta go to school for four years. It take you four years in order to get to where to get to an entry level, and then you do entry level, and then you go and you're a junior something something, and then you go and you're a senior something something, and now operations like literally, I think that if you're not patient with yourself, that you will really run into ruts that um, that can cause depression, anxiety, and a whole bunch of mental stuff that is extremely uncalled for. So taking literally taking your time to be successful. For sure. All right, social media. Moneymaker. <clears throat> Moneymaker. <laughs> <laughs> you proved that. All right, uh, YouTube. Um. I was about to say encyclopedia. Lord have mercy. <laughs> that, that's like a big dictionary, like the largest dictionary that known to man. Yeah, for sure. All right. Uh, your favorite hobbies when you have some free time? Painting. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Like, like any type of paint, like painting on the wall, what type of? So like doing like little art projects and things like that. Um, I just did an abstract painting like a couple of weeks ago and I'm I'm so proud. <laughs> so I like to paint outside of doing this. <laughs> That's what's up. All right. The best decision you ever made in business so far? Um learning how to manage. Okay. Teaching myself those skills to actually be a manager, reading the books on being a manager. Yeah. No. Like, All right. Uh your favorite I'll do your favorite book. My favorite book is How to Win Friends and Influence People. Um, the whole thing at the beginning of the book is say, read them, read the chapters twice. I didn't listen <laughs> and I thought I had it. Like, no, you have to go back and actually study that book because he's giving very core principles. Yeah, me, you know, it took me so long to read that book. I, you know, I read all of the classic self-help ones, but I skipped that one because of the title because it's like, Win Friends? Well, technically, I'm kind of good on friends. I ain't really want no more, right? And then it was like right. influence people. Damn, that sounds like manipulation. I don't know if I'm, I need to do all that to win. So, but when I finally went back and read it, that book is definitely like got to be my top five for sure. So, definitely good one there. All right, uh, favorite music genre? Gospel, right now. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, I usually do the top five rappers, but you want to do top five? Uh, I'll tell you what, we do top five artists in general. Um, I love Janae, Janae Aiko. Okay. Summer Walker. Um, I, in my opinion, that would be it. But you're not trying to eat. <laughs> okay. Um, who else? Th that's all I got. <laughs> yeah, look, you should be listening to podcasts and stuff. You ain't got time for no music. <laughs> yeah, like I feel like I feel like now I'm so not necessarily out of touch with music, but like 
it used to music used to get me going but like now it's just like okay like let's let's focus on something else I don't know any popular songs right now unless people keep singing it then I'm like what is that like right that's what's up. Okay, now that's the end of the lightning round. I got like a handful of questions left for you if you got the time. Yes. All right, cool. All right. So I saw my notes that you've been an entrepreneur for five years. So I was wondering, was that a different company or was that still with your cleaning company? So before I left Kansas City, I opened up a um online boutique for professional women's clothing. So like I was like blazers, um, pants, like suit pants and skirts and things like that. And that's what I started with. Uh, when I realized like how fast, obviously seasons change and you have to be so far ahead of like changing in clothing. That's when I was just like, I don't know if this is for me because I wanted to get into designing and all that. And I was just like, girl, <laughs> like, you just want you just want to take pictures and look cute. Just say that. Like right. <laughs> you could go be brand ambassador for any other company. Like, please. So that, that that's, that's what that's what the business was. <laughs> right. I, I closed like that. Like, I don't I don't know where I got the idea from. It, it was very random. Oh, right. actually, in Kansas City, there's not a lot of like um, women clothing stores besides like the larger ones. We don't even have a Zara. Like it's just like a really small town and I'm just like I cannot find clothes I can't walk into a store and find clothes that I actually like I've always dressed like a little business lady like so that's what it was (laughs) (laughs) now you seem to be killing it on IG right I haven't seen your TikTok but I assume you're doing pretty well over there since you hit six figures just based off of you know social media so my question is what advice can you offer you kind of touched on it earlier but what advice can you offer to other cleaning company owners for how to promote on social media? I would say don't be scared to, obviously with permission, but don't don't be scared to um, to not record what you're doing. Like people, I think people think it's about like you're you're in my business. You should know what I'm doing. Like I'm running this. I got this. In reality, people connect to vulnerability. Vulnerability. Yeah. Like, say if I broke something in somebody's house, that would be my teaching moment to show and say, this is how we would handle if I broke something in your house. Like, and I think people, people are embarrassed to say stuff like that. So me going and cleaning ovens on a camera, um, I had a little identity crisis with cleaning. I'm like, what you doing out here cleaning toilets? Like, I, I had it like, and I feel like, me showing the world or showing other people that it's is really not that bad and I, I make just as much money as you like it's like uh, it is a it's a it's a two ended sword. So I would just definitely say that um opening up on social media and showing what you're doing actually brings in customers. And I don't think that's anything to be scared about. Even you post like things that are going on or this is what you're doing wrong and all of this other stuff. And people still like, they, they cling to you. Cause it's like, Oh, he went through that too. Yeah. For so. sure. And that's something even I'm, I'm even though I, I'll preach, be more vulnerable and, and, and document don't create. I still struggle with myself though. I think, Everybody probably do, but I love that you shared it just to re- reinforce that because people definitely should know that. And then speaking of social media, I'm going to keep it there one more time. Uh, it seems, and I don't know if this is intentional or not, but it seems that you try to keep your business page separate from your personal. Is that a strategy or is it just a, a, a preference? And then like, what's going on with that? Um, I actually, it's because I, I need a social media break sometimes. And so it's like, I, I can't post, uh, I, how do I, I want to say this? I don't think my clients should know what I got going on on Friday. Like, I mean, I don't, I would never post me partying or anything. I don't party, but I wouldn't post <laughs> stuff like that in general. But like, I want you to know only so much about me. If you happen to find my regular Instagram, like I, I'm okay with that. And you can follow me and like pictures. We can chit chat and stuff like that. I'm fine. However, I run a business and 
Say Clean and Mercedes are two totally different entities. Like, I I feel like having a personal life outside of business is important. I tried to merge the two pages and lo and behold, hard eyes from clients. It, it was not, yeah. it was not what, not the vibe for me. I, I, I did not appreciate that. So, <laughs> <laughs> so with that said, I, I would say just with that said though, just and I agree with you for the record, but I want to play devil's advocate and say, okay, well, does that kind of go against the whole be vulnerable thing where you can kind of be yourself? Well, find my real Instagram. <laughs> you gonna see me be vulnerable on my, my days off. You know, okay. like that, that's I don't know. I feel like um the big corporations don't do it. Yeah. They don't post uh team meetings and oh uh, we went to happy hour. They don't post stuff like that. So I feel like I should follow suit. Like um I I don't think it's anything wrong with posting your family and things like that for breast cancer awareness month. I posted my mom. Like I feel like that's appropriate. Yeah. Uh, and I give them breast cancer patients and people who have gone through that. I give them discounts and things like that. That's that's my level of vulnerability with business. Anything yeah. else that's over on the other page. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not private or nothing. I ain't hiding nothing. It's right. just, I was, I was, you know, I want to do that's my own. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> All right, but so like, what else we got here? Okay, your long term goal. Uh, what would you, what's your ultimate goal for the cleaning company? I want to say that since it has changed, I wanted to sell my cleaning company. I, I wanted to get to the point to where I could sell it. And now, now the feeling that I have is, is that if I wanted to stop, I would just want to be able to stop. I, I would give my contractors, hey, I have 15 clients that you have been servicing for X, Y, and Z. Would you like to take them and just give it away? Like, mm -hmm. I feel like with my cleaning company that um, cleaning will be around forever. I don't know if that would be something that I want to pass down to my kids or something like that. But like, if, if this follows me 15 years out, thank you, Lord, I, I'm here for it. Um, I honestly, I don't, I do not have a solid future plan of what I would like to do with my cleaning company. Um, when I realize the, I don't know, maybe I go into teaching or something like other than that, I, I you know, I honestly, I don't know. I just feel like for something to follow my lap by the grace of God, I feel like I'm going to roll with it until I'm just like, I, I want to stop being a cleaning business owner. Yeah. And um, the selling and stuff, it, it sounds interesting, but most of the time when you sell stuff, clients drop off, yeah. people mad that they just f fell into this deal and they feel misled. I, I don't want you calling my phone. Like, because <laughs> now, now the cleaners don't want to work with you, like all that other stuff. No, I, it, it sounds grand and it sounds big, but like, I, I don't think I want that anymore. That's I think I, I think I would actually just want to give it to the people who work with me and say, hey, take this, take this, take this, take this and go on about your way. Unless um, now, nah, unless, mm. nah, unless I can get some money on the back end and how y'all do it, y'all future year. <laughs> now we're talking. But other than that, it, it's still up there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But now. I got to ask you the one last question I always ask at the end of the interview. And it's this, if somebody's watching this video right now and they're wondering, and they're scared to take that leap like you did, what advice would you give that person right now? To trust your instincts to start. That, that's, that's literally all that you have to, to literally just trust your gut that you need to start something. And if something is getting into the cleaning industry, I promise it's much easier than you would ever than you would ever think i told you that i just started by posting on instagram lo and behold you go tell 10 15 family members and now they want you cleaning their house and you have clientele like even commercial businesses 
a lot of people know a manager at CVS and know somebody who work at the eye doctor or the eye clinic and all this other stuff. Like there's people who work at companies who need cleaning services. Yeah. Um, I would definitely say to, to literally trust your gut that it's time to start. Sure. I, I think that's a perfect answer. I think the interview was great. And Mercedes, I just appreciate you for coming on and, and sharing these gems with us today. How can we follow your journey going forward? You guys can follow me on Instagram at Say Clean Cleaning Services, and you can follow me on TikTok at Say Clean. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Thank you so much, my friends. Have a good one. Thank you. Thank you for watching my video and make sure you hit that like button if you liked the video because I know you did and also hit subscribe and right beside that subscribe button is going to be a notification bell. You got to click that because guess what? You never know when I'm going to go live. As a matter of fact, I might go live right now. So make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss my videos. All right. And if you want to start or grow your business, check out cleanbiznetwork.com, all right? We have cleaning business starter kits. We have a lead generation service to help you grow your cleaning business, all type of stuff. And also, don't forget to download the Calculated Clean mobile app as well, all right? So that's what I got for y'all until you click another video and go watch, man. Watch another video. Why not? Binge on it. Let's go.